everyone and welcome back to our channel. So in this video, let's discuss about scheduled actions in Odoo 40. That is automated actions. So uh, we can make use of this scheduled actions for running uh, regular running of a process. That is in Odoo, it enables us to execute activities without requiring manual interaction. So to view the schedule actions, uh, some default schedule actions, you can go to settings and you have to enable the developer mode. So it is already enabled in my system. Okay, so after enabling that, you have come under technical, technical settings and here you can find schedule actions under automation. So just open that. So there are a lot of uh, schedule actions available. So you can see we have some of them active and some of them inactive. Okay. So here you can search for Okay, so here you can see a schedule action created. So when you open this, you can see the form view of the schedule action. So this one is update state that is uh, in the model contract that is HR contract. This schedule action is used to update the state. So it is executed every one day and you can see it is active. Then next execution date can be seen here that is after one day and the number of calls and priority of this schedule action. Then, okay, we can enable repeat missed. That is, it can specify if missed occurrences should be executed when the server restarts. And here also you can see the Python code that is triggered uh, when this schedule action is called. So you can see the function name here, uh, Python code, and you can see security and help related to this schedule action. So it is possible to run this schedule action manually also by clicking this button, run manually. Okay, so let's see how we can create a schedule action. So for that, let's go to PyCharm. Okay, so here I have a custom module, college. And I have created uh, models, like the class files, then set security for the models. And I, I have defined the view. Okay, so here, okay, you can search for, you can see it is already installed. Here you can see the menu. So when I open this here, I have created uh, an application, a module. Uh, so here you can see I have created a record, student record, the college. One is an archive and the other one is not archive. Okay, so when you open the form, you can see this name of the student and some details like age, gender, time to leave. That is time to leave from this college, then blood group, date of birth. And I have added uh, qualifications of the student and you can also add some description. If you want to create more degree, you can just come under degrees and create new degrees for the students. Okay. Now I'm going to create a schedule action. Uh, that is an action that runs every day and checks uh, whether the time to leave become, it is equal to current day. So that the student can be removed from this list and can be moved to arcade. So what we have to do is that just check the time to leave uh, whether it is equal to today's date and remove the student from this list and move to arcade.
Okay, let me copy this name. So this one is actually the name of the scheduled action. So I'm copying the name from here and just using that name. So here you can see it is defined in order 13, 12, and 14. So I'm opening 14. So you can see the XML file in which uh, the schedule action, the record for schedule action is defined. Okay, so let's copy this record from here. And now you can see on, inside my custom module, I have created a folder for data. Okay, inside this, I'm going to create a new XML file. Okay, I've added XML version and coding, then Odo tag and data tag. So let's close that. Okay. Let's again copy this. So now you can see, um, so this one is a record uh, that is used for defining the schedule action that is for HR contract state updation. So I'm updating this code. So make sure you change the ID because otherwise it will be overridden. So here, I have given a different ID. Then model must be ir.cron. And here you can see a field that is name. So we have to provide a name for this schedule action. So this will name will be displayed here. So you can see this one is a name field. Then we have to provide the model ID. So this one indicates to which model this particular schedule action must work for. So we have to change the reference from here. Model underscore model name. So my model name is stood, not stood. So I'm providing stood underscore stood. Okay. Then we have to uh, define the field name equal to type that is ir.actions.server. Okay, so here you can see a field uh, that is for Python code. So, uh, when I create a new schedule action, you can see some default syntax is added under this field, uh, for this field. So, uh, from PyCharm, you can update the Python code. So here you can see field name state code. 
and you can uh, see a field name code where you can add the code. So you have to provide model dot update state if you have defined a function uh, inside the model. So I have already defined a function update state. In the case of my HR contract, so I am changing this code because I want to provide a different one for this uh, for my new scheduler. So I have a std.py Python class file inside which I have defined an auto remove std uh, function, which will be executed uh, when this scheduler is triggered. So I am pasting the function name here. Okay, so I have to provide model dot function name. So this function auto removes student. It travels through every student records and checks whether the field time to leave of the student uh, is today's date. And if it is so, then the student will be moved to archived list. So you can see there is one student record in archived list that is John. So when you remove that, you can see the record of uh, student Hari. Okay. So we want this uh, schedule action to be executed every day. So for that, here you have to provide the interval number as one, then interval type as days, so that the function will be executed. That is, this schedule will be triggered uh, every day once and you can set the number call as negative one if you want this to be triggered without a limit okay so the you can see the auto removal xml file is created and inside the function auto remove student okay it travels every student record and checks the uh, time to leave field whether it is equal to current today's date and if it is so then uh, this active fill field of each student will be updated to false so by default it is set as uh, true so it will be updated to false and if the active field is set as false then here you can see the student will be moved to archive that is we have defined a filter string archived with the domain active equal to false. So that's how a student is moved to archived list. Okay. Now add this uh, file, XML file inside manifest. Okay, so this auto remote XML is inside my data folder, data direct directory. Okay, I have added that. Now let's restart the service. After that, you have to update the module. That is update the module. So when you go to settings, you can see when you search for removal, you can see the remover, remove scheduler is created. Uh, you can see the model name stood.stood and other fields like uh, it is executed every day and it is active. And you can see the next execution date is at as tomorrow's date. And you can see the time here. Mm, and you can see number of calls. Okay, then under the Python code, uh, you can see the function name auto remove stood. Auto remove stood is set. Okay. So let's go to college and create a new student record.
I'm setting time to leave as today's date. Adding date of birth, then can I qualification? Okay, now let's run the scheduled action manually. Okay, I'm running this manually. So when you run it manually, the action will be triggered and the function will be called. And when you check the college, now you can see the student is removed from the list and it is moved to archive. So you can see the army is moved to archive. Okay. Now let's see how we can execute this automatically, how the uh, scheduled action is triggered automatically. I'm creating another student record. Today's date. Okay, you can see the record is created. Okay, here you can see the execution date. So by default, it is set as tomorrow's date. Uh, so now let's update this next execution date. Okay, I'm updating it to today's date. I'm changing the time from here. So now the time is 2.26, so I'm changing to 2.28. So let's see how it gets automatically executed at this time. So we'll save this. So let's see how this student is moved to archive list when the action is triggered. So now we can see time is Okay, so now you can see the time is 2.28. Now let's refresh the window. So you can see automatically that uh, action is triggered and the student is moved to archive list. So you can see that student is moved to archive list. So this is how we define schedule action and execute an action regularly. So that's all in this video and thanks for watching.